I can. I can depend on God. When I'm in the valley, I can depend on God. When my health is in question, I can depend on God. When it looks like the world's against me, I can depend on God. When it seems like there's no way, I can depend on God. You ought to give God a great testimony praise. Woo! Oh, I can depend on God. Oh, yes, sir. You ought to get a revelation if you had a manifestation that I can depend on God. Give God a good loving praise. I can depend on God. Tell three people around you, that's all I got as my hope is to depend on God. That's all I have as my hope now is to depend on God. That's all I have is to depend on God. And I got a testimony. He has not failed me yet. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness in the building? Oh, I can depend on God. He's my security. He's my covering blanket. He's my shield and my buckler. Amen. He's my, oh, he's my royal king. Amen. He's one in whom I can depend. Give God a good hand clap, praise. Amen. He's my God, amen. He's my savior. He's my way maker. I, I tell you, I got a testimony that I can depend on God. Amen. Am I talking to anybody as a witness? Amen. That God is, amen, my shield and my buckler, my provider, my Jehovah Jireh. Amen. He's my Jehovah Nissa. He fights battles for me. Amen. Battles that I don't even, I'm not even aware of. I, I, did anybody hear that? There's battles that God is fighting that we're not even aware of. Amen. He has dispatched angels, amen, to be our re reward and protect us. And amen. While we're asleep, He got His angels encamped about the righteous. Oh, you can depend on God. Amen. He's a great dependability. Amen. Amen. Put your trust in Him. Because he'll never fail you nor, amen, leave you. And I, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I, when I think about Jacob, Jacob said, listen here, I, I'm going through. I'm on a run for my life. Amen. But he hit a place. Amen. And he said, what? I didn't even know that God was in this place. Ah, he, 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 he's always there. Don't you ever feel alone. Don't you ever feel despondent. Amen, because you got a God that, amen, is mindful of you. Amen. Don't let your emotions override the word of God. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, if he said it, he meant it. Come on, if he said it, he meant it. Amen. God means what he say, and he says what he means. How many, how many know that to be true right now? That he says what he means, and he means what he said. Amen. You can depend on God. Come on, give him one more good hand clap before we get into the word. God, we want to thank you right now. And we want to give you glory and we want to give you praise. I pray that every word that comes out of these lips of clay, that somebody will gravitate and grab hold of it and be excited about receiving it so that they can be healed, delivered, and set free. God, you said in your word how you sent the evangelist. Amen. I feel an evangelist anointing today that God, you will send your word and the people will receive it with joy that, amen, demons will be released and set free from the lives of your children. Yokes will be destroyed. Folks will get regain their hope and trust. And God, we thank you because in that day when you sent Philip, the Bible says they received the word with joy and there was great power that was manifested. So God, we ask you right now to move, amen, according to your will in each and every one's lives that are under the sound of my voice. And God, we won't fail to give you the praise, to give you the glory and the honor in Jesus' mighty name. Put those sanctified hands together and give God the glory. 
Boy, I tell you, there's some songs that almost take you away from the message you want to preach because, <laughs> because the song is just so wonderful, amen, and exciting in your spirit. That's why you got to get, get, get here early so you can get the world and the, the things and, and different things off you so you can really just, just base in the presence of God. Amen. I just believe that, amen, when you get settled and quiet, amen, and, and just get in the presence of God, it does a renewal in your spirit. Amen. Just gives you something. Amen. Amen. That the world can't give you. Amen. I'd like to talk today. <laughs> I didn't scare you, did I? <laughs> I want to talk today for a moment. Recipients of the altar. Recipients of the altar. I am so glad that despite our previous behaviors, despite where we may have come from, the lifestyles we may have lived, that God has given us a great invitation, the unclean, the unworthy, the undeserving, and yet he invites us into a most holy place Oh, y'all didn't get what I just said. It was, it, it, it's a holy place to be in the presence of a living God. It, it's, a, it's a holy privilege to know that we are invited. Uh, uh, have you ever went somewhere and wasn't invited? Amen. But, and and, and they look at you and wonder why you are here. Because we didn't invite you. Amen. But God says, amen, despite what you've done and what you've said and how you act, you are welcome in my presence. Oh, that's enough to give God the glory. That's enough to shatter every demonic, depressing spirit. It makes you feel like you belong. The Bible says, who art thou, O oh man, that God is mindful of you? Look, just tell somebody, God is mindful of you. Just the mere fact that you are here, amen, God needed you to know that, amen, you are so precious to him. Despite the setbacks, despite your view. Oh, come on, somebody. You are wonderfully made. You are marvelous in his eyes. You are the apple of his dream. I wish you, you, do, you need to know who you are to be invited. Good God of mine. To be invited. Whew. See, in the Old Testament days, amen, you couldn't be invited into the holies of holies because you weren't holy enough. You couldn't come, amen, behind the curtain, amen, to enter in to the most holy place. If you did and you weren't right, you would die because you could only be holy as far as the law was concerned. You couldn't even come near or approach or touch anything that was holy or you would die. But thank God for the blood of Jesus. Amen. He destroyed and ripped down the partition and now we are welcome. You ought to give God a praise. A place I couldn't go. I now can come boldly upon the throne of grace. Oh, notice what I said. The throne of grace. Oh, you didn't catch what I just said to you. The throne of grace. You ought to tell somebody you are invited to a high place. The throne. The throne. Somebody say the throne. The throne of grace. We, we have been invited. So he says, let us then fearlessly and what confidently and boldly draw nigh to the throne of grace. Good God Almighty. That's, that's, a, that's a high place. That, that, that's, that's a place of honor. That's a place of royalty. Did you not know that you are a part of a royal priesthood? Do you not know that you are in a royal family? Do you realize, oh, I wish I could get somebody to know who you are. 
Hey, hey, hey. We thank God for the blood. We thank God for the sacrifice because he ripped off our, our uh, whew, good God of mine. I'm so excited, I can't even explain it to you. But you ought to realize and understand, he ripped off our flesh and gave us a robe of royalty. He, oh, he made us special. He gave us an anointing, amen, that the devil can't snatch out of our lives. Oh, I want you to know you are welcome into a high place. Good God of mine. Because of the blood. Tell your neighbor, because of the blood. The throne of God's unmerited favor. For all of you that's trying to earn God's favor, you ought to come to understand you already got his favor. The moment you gave your life to Christ, you were immediately invited to the throne. Ah, oh, come on, somebody. You took off your grave clothes already. And now you have, amen, are walking in the spirit of a living God. You are somebody. Hit two people and tell them, you are somebody now. So glad I don't have to try to earn a right standard with God. That's why I'm so glad he got rid of the law. There's no way I could have kept the law. Some of you ought to know about the law. As you ride down the highway, it says 55, but you're doing 60 and 62. You said, well, listen, I know I got a little allowance, but in According to the law, if you go one mile over the speed limit, you will, amen, prosecuted as guilty. But by the grace of God, amen, I can't hit every night. I can't hit every eye. I can't dot every, I can't cross every T. But this one thing I do, I can depend. Tell your neighbor, I can depend on God. Amen. He cleansed me. He washed me. He anointed me. He broke my yokes. He gave me encouragement. And I can, de I can depend on God. Tell your neighbor you can depend on God. Unmerited favor. Unmerited favor. I didn't deserve it, but he gave it to me anyhow. He, he gave me a front row seat in, into the throne of his grace. Tell your neighbor, I got a front row seat. And I didn't have to pay a dime. Ah, uh, guess what? You pay about $5,000 to sit on the front seat in the NBA games. And no telling what they pay, amen, to be, amen, at the NBA finals. They got to pay big bucks. But I'm so glad that the blood paid it all. I can sit in the presence of a living king who created the heavens and the earth, who blew into man's nostrils and man became a living soul, who parted the Red Sea and let the children walk across on dry, 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 dry ground. Woo! Good God. Tell your neighbor, I got that kind of favor. With the universe, with the God of the glory. Amen. I got that kind of favor. Woo. That we may receive mercy for our failures. So shame is already destroyed. You ain't got to walk around feeling guilty. You ain't got to walk around ashamed of your past. I, 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 I'm so glad to be free from yesterday. People will hold your mistakes forever. But I'm so glad I got favor with God. That God did not impute my amen unrighteousness. But he imputed his righteousness upon my life. You might talk about what I did a year ago. But God says I don't even remember. Because when I look at you, I see the blood. You got favor that's unmerited. You didn't earn it. He just gave it to you. You ought to receive it. I'm talking about receiving. Recipients. I'm talking about recipients. One thing I've learned about us is that we love to give and help people, but when it comes time for someone to want to help you, when it comes time that somebody want to bless you, you done picked up somebody and they brought you to church and they turn around and want to give you a, a couple of dollars. Oh, no, that's okay. Shut your mouth up. As God's vehicle to give you more access to blessings because you are being a blessing. Anybody catch that? Huh? Recipient. Somebody say recipient. 
we got to learn what to be a recipient is really all about. To be a recipient means one that receives. One that what? Receives. We got to learn how to receive what God has offered us. We got to understand what this place of favor has allowed us to obtain. A God that created the universe, a God who owns a cattle on a thousand hills, when he opens up doors to bless you, you ought to become a recipient. Huh? It's not about how well you do anything. This whole program is about the Lord and how gracious he is, how loving he is, and what he wants to do for his children. And even to those that are far off, that who have not yet acknowledged him, but we've got to learn how to give them the message of hope and let them know that our God is able. He's a God you can depend on. The throne of grace. Can I tell you something about the throne of grace? It is the entrance to it all. Did anybody hear what I just said? It's the entrance to it all. Well, what are you saying, preacher? If you look at what the Bible says in the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 3, it says, Blessed be the God and the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, who has already, somebody ought to say already, Huh? Somebody say already. How huh? did what? Has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Where? In where? In heavenly places. But it's in Christ. See, we try, you know, something has happened this week that, amen, I began to just ponder is that people want success and answers for their life without having God to be the author of their life. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? They want the blessing, but they don't want the blesser. And see, God says, when you come into the throne of my grace, when you become a recipient of my love, everything you stand in need of, I've already provided. Oh, you! but you got to catch it in the spirit. You got to catch it in your heart. You got to catch it in your vision. That it, grace, that throne, is the entrance to it all. Good God of my, you ought to tell somebody nothing lacking, nothing wanting. What do you mean, preacher? The Bible says according to, as he have chosen. Whew. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, I want to tell you something. Your background was important to your selection. Your background. I didn't come to save the righteous, but I come to save the unrighteous. And I came to invite you because of your background. I wanted that when I came and got you, that when I wash you up and sanctify you and deliver you, you won't get bigger than what you were when I found you. Because you'll always understand that you'll have to depend on me. In order to keep cover, in order to keep the blood upon your life, you gotta stay connected to my purpose and my dreams. I selected you because you was a mess from the flow up. I selected you because you didn't have the proper, amen, equipment to make it through life. I selected you because you thought you was unworthy. I selected you because you had no hope. I selected you because you didn't have dreams and aspirations. And so therefore, because you were hopeless, amen, I came along while you were drowning up in your own blood, disconnected from the umbilical cord and called you my own. You ought to be feeling privileged to know he selected you. People brag about I chose the Lord. You ain't choose nothing. 
conditions warrant your desire to want a, a God to help you. Whew, I wish I could talk to somebody. He said, here, listen to what he says. According, amen, as he have chosen us in him before. Isn't that wonderful? To know he knew what you were going to do before you did it and already provided your solution before you could even figure it out. Tell your neighbor, you can depend on God. <laughs> he said, listen, listen, listen. When, when God selects you, 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 I don't know about you, but you can feel so unworthy when he selects you. Elisha felt like that. He said, my God, the glory and the splendor. Oh God, you must have made a wrong choice. I, I know I'm talking to somebody right now. You keep looking at all the limitations that you might have in your life and you be talking about, well, you know, I don't think, hey amen. No, no, just shut up and become a recipient. Learn how to receive favor when you don't deserve it. Learn how to receive God's blessings when you don't receive it. Oh, come on, your neighbor, when you don't deserve it. Yet he said, I still want you to have it. And you didn't have to earn my love. I loved you before you loved yourself. I love you so much I sent my son. I love you so much I watched him die because that's how important. I don't know who the Holy Ghost talking to, but you are worth more than what you have imagined your own worth is. Shh. You know, my wife got some dolls in the house. They, they, they're not there to be played with. They're there to be put on display. You know why? Because in her heart, they have value. Don't you know God got you on display? Because you got value. I wish I could talk to somebody. He said, and guess what? He said, I did it for my name's sake. You, you know why you're not gonna be defeated? Because it's for God's name's sake. You know why the devil can't stop you? Because of his name's sake. Amen. I want you to know you are welcome into a high place for his name's sake. You ought to give God a praise right there. very foundation of the world huh that we should be what holy and without blame before him in love good God almighty we must understand then the term recipient to get the full impact of being chosen I know when God came into my life I was less deserving I felt just like apostle Paul I'm the least. Oh, come on, tell your neighbor, neighbor. Prior to salvation. You know you had some issues. But look at God. But look at God. Look at me. I have been set free. I, I wish I knew all the words. I'll sing it to you. Huh? Hey, man, I'm going to start having y'all help. Choir members are holding mic, so when I start the song, y'all finish it for me. You and I have been chosen to receive all of God's provisions. The problem is we don't know how to receive. And we've got to learn that what God has done is already provided. Stop fretting, stop worrying, and put your trust in God because you can depend. I hope y'all were just singing that song to just get us all excited. But you were singing it because you got a revelation. You, you have a witness in your spirit. You've been through enough to know God won't fail you. You've seen his mighty hand. You've seen a move of his Holy Spirit. You've seen him bring you out when you was all the way in. And yet he did not disappear. Amen. He stayed right there. And he helped you through your storm. And he brought you in. Oh, he brought you into victory. to understand the term recipient to get the full impact of being chosen. Amen. And you and I have been chosen to receive all that he has. 
tell you, neighbor, you got to get it all. Or you should have hung with us Friday night. You would have heard about getting it all. Tell your neighbor, you got to get it all. Don't leave none. I don't know about you, but mama back in the day, my, my, my foster mother used to make these here pancakes. We used to call them flour bread. Get that alligator syrup. And, come on now. And then when it gets down low, you take that, that flour bread and you, you, you just sop up all you can get. Uh, come on now. You got to just sop it all up. You didn't want to leave nothing on the plate. And boy, my God, that last piece seemed to be mighty good. It's time to start sopping. Tell your neighbor, it's time to start sopping. All that God has given you, sop it up, child. All that God promised you ought to suck it. Oh, you ought to tell him, sop it up, child. God's got some blessings in your life. And not only that, after you got finished eating and, and that flour bread and, and crumbs be on Finger looking good. Some of y'all older ones are smiling and go, y'all know what I'm talking about. Flower bread. You, you got to view it. You got to view it to the point where you understand the purpose of what God has already provided. Tell your neighbor, you got to be a, a recipient now. Stop rejecting blessings. When somebody offers you something, receive it with joy. I used to have a hard time with, with Sister Mary. Sister Mary, a volunteer, and help you do whatever needs to be done. Oh, she's not the perfect example, but get, thank God for the favor that's on her life. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm not perfect, but thank God for the favor on my life. And I used to try to bless her, amen, and, 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 and just because of her, her faithfulness. And when I would go to give her something, oh, pastor, that's okay, pastor, that's okay. That's, I said, you better break out of that. Because you blocking my blessing for becoming a giver. And I don't know about you. God has looked at me and see how I give so he gives me so I can give again. When I broke that thing down to Mary, I can't get the word I'm going to give out of my mouth to give to her. She, oh, yeah, thank you, pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Sometimes you got to learn how to receive. Huh? Because you got some, whew, you got some rights that you void out because you don't know how to become a recipient. Is anybody here in the Holy Ghost talk to you yet? Listen to what it says in Luke 13 and 16. The Bible says, and not, not this woman being the daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, lo, these 18 years, 18 years of not knowing you could have had it sooner. I, I wish I could get somebody and look at your neighbor and say, what you missing, what you missing? Because you don't know how to be a recipient. Say, so, lo, these 18 years, be loose from this bond on this Sabbath day. What you fail to understand, Jesus, Jesus was revealing to this woman and those around her is that she had a legal right. You ought to leap out by your chair on that one. You got a legal right to be blessed. You, 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 you got to stop walking around like you got to deserve to be blessed. No, you got a legal right to be blessed. And you know what's so wonderful about it? I hope I don't get ahead of myself. Satan knows you got a legal right. But if you don't know your rights, <laughs> ignorance is not bliss. Let me finish reading this thing now. Bound, amen, these 18 years, but because we have a legal right, we got access to God. And not only that, to his throne of grace. Uh -huh. Let's prepare ourselves and look at all the souls as recipients of the altar of God's grace. Everybody that comes in these doors or come into your life should be welcomed because of the fact 
that you know what the throne of grace is all about. But see, what's, what's, so, what's so awesome? Now, let, let, me, let me just kind of slow down here. What is so awesome is that Satan knows the rules of engagement. Yes, he does. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, yes. Satan is not stupid. Is not stupid. He knows what he, what he can do and what he can't do. Yes. Oh, come on, tell your other neighbor, say, neighbor, you, you got to realize this, yes. is that Satan understands the rules of engagement. Huh? Look at, look, at, look at what the rules of engagement says. A directive issued by a military authority specifically or specifying the circumstance and limitations. Let me say that one more time. The circumstances and the limitations under which forces, now what it did? It forces will engage in combat with the enemy. We are in the fight of our lives. But even though we can't see it, Satan knows that there's a boundary in which he cannot go. And as long as we follow the rules of engagement, no weapon, good God Almighty, hey, hey, hey. And, and there's nothing he can, come on, get bold enough to help somebody, let them know there's nothing he can do to you. <laughs> nothing. Come on, just say it, nothing. nothing. Serve him notice that you now come to know he can't do nothing. Whew. So as wicked, now I want you to catch this now, as wicked as he is, he can't violate the rules that God set in place. Well, you, 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 you need to stop. You, you hear people that the devil, he just did it. He just stopped giving him free advertisement. He can't do nothing. Come on, somebody come up to you. Child, you know, that devil. No, 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 no. Let's not even finish that conversation. He can't do nothing. If you're doing what you're supposed to do, he can't violate your ability to get what God has promised you. Oh, yeah, I wish I could talk to somebody. But you know what? Jesus reassures us how welcome we are, amen, and when people try to make you feel unworthy, you ought to get away from them and tell them the blood has set me free. I, 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 love, I love how God is always through scripture trying to reinforce Amen. His love upon us with understanding because if you got flesh, anybody got any flesh on them? Anybody, anybody in here? Don't you know sometimes that flesh will get upon you and try to stop you from believing what God has told you? Don't you know he'll try to bring up your past and cause you to have some issues with what you've been through? Amen. Somebody might have violated you and you're still holding on to it from years down the road. But I want to tell somebody, <clears throat> forget those things which are behind. And walk in the bliss that God has in your future. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And no matter what you've done, I, 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 I need to tell somebody this quickly. Paul did everything that you possibly could do. David did things that were unimaginable. But these two people that I just mentioned became God's favor in their story. Why? Because they became recipients of God's grace. Yes. Anybody going to talk to me? Yes. Listen to this story. The Bible says in Luke 18, 10, two men went up into the temple to pray. They went where? To pray. Anybody ever heard Denise pray? Uh, you can hear in the next building. Huh? Because she loves talking out loud. And, 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 and really what it is is to initiate everybody else to join in and pray instead of having conversations. So the reason I brought that point up is because I want you to see it in another light, the scripture. What are you saying, preacher? The Bible says two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. Now, this is prayer versus a prayer of pride versus prayer of humility. Prayer of pride 
versus prayer of humility. Are y'all with me? So we see two systems of prayer being ushered up. Now, as loud as Denise be praying, oh, Lord, I just want to thank you that I ain't like these. The man went around praying about how well he did. Uh -huh. You know what I call those kind of prayer people? I call them the blockers of the altar. When God is trying to welcome everybody to his throne of grace, they hear you pray out loud, I'm so glad I'm not like them. Now, I want you to see now the publican is hearing, amen, the Pharisee pray. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, the human side of the uh, publican would hear those words and feel unworthy. Y'all gonna hear what I'm saying after a while. And so now God is hearing the Pharisee brag about his stance and how holy he is and how he follows the rules and regulations and while he's yet bragging in his prayer, the humility of the Pharisee or the publican, his heart is being crushed. Did not the word say he would beat on his chest because he was hearing how unworthy he was. The blocker of the altar was bragging while God was listening. And the Bible says, and he spake this parable unto a certain which trusted themselves that they were what? Righteous and did what? Despised others. And so God is saying, when you pray prayers like you deserve his grace, he doesn't even care about what you're saying. I wish I could talk to somebody. See, you gotta learn how to be a recipient and not a blocker. This man was blocking the altars of God's grace. There was somebody who was tore up from the flow up that needed just a kind word of love. And yet he heard nothing but condemnation. Whew. Am I making this thing? Here Jesus reveals that some block the altar of grace by making those that need the mercy seat of God feel unworthy and unapproachable to his throne. But I'm getting ready to serve you a notice. You're getting ready to get an eye opener. Each believer, come on, point at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God talking about you. Each believer should be a representative of the throne of grace. Yes. Did you catch what I just said? Yes. Each one of us should be a representative of the throne of grace. Like this woman that cried out. Yes. This woman cried out. You know what she said? Look at the watchman. See what the word says in Psalm? A uh, Song of Solomon? Three and three? It says, the watchman. Tell your neighbor that he's talking about you now. Yes. Come on, tell somebody else. He's talking about you now. Yes. If you save and love the Lord, God talking about you. You are the policeman that police during the night. You are the one that police to see folk who are in danger. You are the one that has the grace of God, amen, and the representative to the keys of God's throne because you have already experienced it and became a recipient. So now that you become a recipient, you are now a watchman to help somebody else find the throne of grace. Good God about that. I hope I didn't say it too fast. Listen to what it says here. The watchmen that go about the city found me. Good God Almighty. Tell your neighbor, sound like an evangelistical call to me. Go out in the highway and the hedges and compel them that the house might be filled. That's what it sound like to me. Listen to what it says now. To whom I said, saw ye him whom my soul loveth. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But see, if you back up, you'll find out this woman was tore out, out the frame. It said because, amen, by night on my bed, I sought him whom my soul loved. I sought him, but what? I, I, I found him not. 
I didn't find how to get to God. I couldn't find the altars of God's mercy. I didn't know I could be delivered. I didn't know I could be saved. I thought I was too unclean to be invited. I didn't think I had the right to come. And now God sent watchmen. God sent representatives like you and I to be able to invite them through the throne of grace so that they could become recipients. God was now moving upon the heart of this woman. And we don't know the condition really of her life, amen, at this time. But guess what? No man can come unto God except he do what? Huh? Except he draws them. So see, sometimes when people are going through and, and, and they don't know what to do, God has allowed you to be a recipient and a representative of his throne of grace. That's why if you remember what I said in the beginning of the message, your background is important to your selection because guess what? People are going to come into your life who has been through what you have gone through and now you can reach back and help somebody. You can point them to the direction of the throne. You can invite them and make them feel good. You can invite them and make them feel worthy. You can tell them, amen, regardless of how you feel about it, I want to tell you how God feels about it. I want you to know he sent his son just to rescue you because he already rescued me. And so I'm come to tell you, you can be a recipient. Good God, man. Aren't you glad you received him? Despite all that you've been through, and yet he made a way. Look at this. No man can come. Uh, and so when Jesus, amen, draws the wounded, when he draws the broken, when he receives the lame, we become the representatives of welcome to the throne of grace. Yes. Every sinner that walks through that door should feel welcome. Yes. My God, I, I, I didn't feel like I belonged in this church because you all look like y'all just so holy. But see, when you look at them and tell them, listen here, child, I've been where you are. I wasn't always like this. I got a testimony. He was there when I didn't have nobody to help me. And I want to invite you to the loving God that I've experienced. I want you to become a recipient of the throne of God's grace. And you can boldly tell your neighbor you ain't got to hide your sin. You can come boldly here. You can't hide your fault. But you can come boldly here. And guess what God will do? He'll receive you. Presenters of the altars. As presenters of the altars for the recipients of the altar. You got to have some compassion. That man that was doing all that praying didn't have none. And yet when that, 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 that publican got up there, he said, Lord, I'm not even worthy. But guess what? Jesus looked at the, the situation and said, listen, who do you think went home justified? Whew. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Every time I pray, I go home justified because it's not about my righteousness. It's about the love I have for him and he loves me enough to cover my faults and see my need and he helps me get delivered. Oh, you ought to tell somebody, he's helping me get delivered. Grace don't give me an excuse. It gives me time to get it right. I wish I could talk to somebody. I'm going to get to that in a minute here. But we see here in the book of Jude, the Bible says, amen, in Jude, keeping, uh, keep being compassionate. Wait a minute now. Keep what? Amen. To those who still what? Uh -huh. In other words, they keep falling. How many, it's amazing that, listen, let me digress just for a second. It's amazing that we think that they're doing it to us. And have the nerve to get frustrated to say, as much as I done told you what you need to do, and you won't do it. Like you have the distribution. <laughs> like you have the distrib distribution card to give them access to God's grace. <laughs> there was a man that was forgiven for much. 
And then he came across somebody that owed him something. And then he tried to take them to the limit. He wanted to cut them off. And then when the master heard about how he, he didn't have no compassion, the master said, wait a minute now. I gave you all opportunities to be a recipient to the throne of my grace. And now you don't extend it to somebody else? Oh, shame on you. Uh, look at what it said. See, 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 I want to go back. I don't know who I'm talking to, but let me tell you something. Thank God for your history. Because it equips you to know how to snatch others out of the fire. If you ain't been through nothing, you ain't got no snatching power. Come on, tell your neighbor, neighbor, do you got any snatching power? Or are you just running off like a parakeet? Have you been through anything to help somebody who's going through something and be able to reach back and pull them out and don't worry about how long it takes for them to get delivered because you are a recipient and it took you a while and now it's their turn and God want to use you to reach in the fire. Oh! The fire represents the, oh God. The fire represents the danger and how close and how deep in sin the individual is. To snatch them out the fire. Be merciful, what? Be merciful, what? I can't hear you. Come on, I can't hear you. Well, I'm tired of this. What do he say? Well, I don't think we're going to make it. What do he say? He said over and over to them. And when we do this, it cost us. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the cost is high. Come on, tell them this cost is high. You see, see, here's Stephan reaching into the fire. You ready to read the story? I'm just about to get ready to come in. Look at the story. The story here says this. It says, amen, in Acts 7 and 59 and they stoned Stephen tell your neighbor neighbor their fire, their fire. was being thrown yeah. at Stephen <laughs> oh, somebody gonna catch that why are they always angry with you cause they're in the fire and what they do is they I don't know if y'all ever watched them superhero movies and they throw up their hand and they, something magical come up there. They throw it and it hits whoever they're throwing it at. That's how the enemy wants to do because the enemy don't want you to be a recipient or make them a recipient to the throne of grace. But if they could stop you from mm, extending God's grace, then they win. But Stephen went down into the fire and it cost him his life. Look at what it said. It says, amen. And they stoned him, calling upon God and saying, Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and he cried. Somebody say he kneeled down. He kneeled down. And he cried with a loud voice. Amen. Now look at this now. You would think that he would kneel down and cry with a loud voice I curse you in the name of God. No. You know what he did? He reached even further. And he said, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. He reached so far into the fire that he snatched some of those that threw stones at him and watched him die, ended up giving their lives to Christ. What are you willing? <laughs> Getting quiet in there now. I don't hear no, hey, glory, Jesus. Preach, pastor, preach. <laughs> I don't hear nothing now. It's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> There may be something that God is trying to get in you in your stretching out for the sacrifice for the laws. It comes with a high price because there is really a burning hell. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, David, there's a real burning hell now. 
And as we share the story of hell, remember mercy. Come on now. Remember mercy. What are you talking about, preacher? Sometimes we get so caught up in telling people about hell that we lose the compassion to know about mercy. Anybody hear me? And so we see here, but it always couple your mercy with the fear of God. What does that mean to me? It's saying that when we approach folks that got flaws, remember you in that position. Remember what he brought you through before you exclude or terminate or cancel somebody out. This is an evangelistical message. I don't know if y'all can realize that. And you know, a lot of times when we come to church, we want to read, oh, what God going to do for me? What God going to No, no. God said, I need you to have a heart to reach now. Time is winding up. And we got to stop being so self-focused that we learn how to reach for those that need God's grace and mercy. I wish I could talk to somebody. Listen to this as I get ready to close. And it says, be extremely careful to keep yourself free from the pollution of the flesh. Because hell still wants you. Come on, tell three people around you. Hell still wants you. Don't think you arrived. Hell still wants you. Huh? So I got to do something. So we must learn how to mix truth and mercy correctly in the law. The Bible says, amen, Proverbs 11 and 30, listen, he said, the fruit of righteous, uncompromisingly righteous in the, a tree of life, and he who is wise, capture, good God Almighty. Can I ask a question? You don't have to answer. How many people have you witnessed to that gave their life to Christ? Are you bold enough to reach out and witness to somebody? He says here, to do what? To capture lives. For God as what? Fishers of men and gathers and receive them for eternity. I want to close. The Bible says here, wait and listen. Everyone who is thirsty, come to the water. And he who is, has no money, somebody say unmerited favor. Come and buy. Come and eat. It's your time. Stop telling about, amen, what you got to get. No, you got to get these people to the altar and let them know they can be recipients of God's grace and mercy. Huh? Come, somebody holler out, come. Uh, tell them, come, 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 come. Buy without price. Amen, buy, come on. Milk, come on, come on, tell them. Milk without money. You ain't got to buy this thing. It's free indeed, child. And to you, the saints of God, I say to you and challenge you today, become the watchman because you've been recipients of the throne of grace. Come on, give God a good hand clap. God use me. God use me. Use me because you selected me. God, use my story. It's my testimony. To help somebody along the way that my living will not be in vain. I don't know about you, but I don't want to walk through this life and not leave an imprint on the lives I've come in contact with. He selected you so that you can Help people become recipients so that they can know that they can come boldly upon the throne of grace and to obtain God's mercy. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. He wants to help our society. People say, Pastor, I, I don't ever see you in these marches. I don't ever see you, amen, going out here and petitioning. And you know what I tell them? That's not my job. My job is to preach the gospel and if we get together and preach the gospel effectively, crime will go down because somebody will get saved. Holding a picket sign is good for those that have that call. But my call is to preach this gospel, to share my life story and to help folks know you can become a recipient of the grace of God. Not based on who you are, but based on who he is. 
and his grace is sufficient to cover every fault and sin in your life. You don't have to walk around with a shame suit because God will change your garments. He'll take off the garments of heaviness and he'll put on you a garment of praise. You will thank God for what you've been through. You will say, God, I didn't have to stay there so long, but I'm so glad to come as I am right now to get all that you have. And guess what God does? He shows you the welcoming mat by sending his son to embrace and hold you and bring you in and snatch you out the fire. Oh, aren't you glad he did it for you? Come on, give God a good praise. In every circumstance he's been there, you can count on God. We got to teach God's mercy. And at the same time, coupled with grace and compassion, see yourself. Remember where he's brought you from. That you might be able to have the patience of Job. God, I know I'm waiting on their change. And while I'm waiting on their change, keep changing me, Lord. Let me move from glory to glory. And guess what God's going to do? The more you reach to snatch people out of the fire, the more he's going to do for you. Bow your heads and let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise and glory on this morning. We thank you for the love and the mercy that you have bestowed upon us even while we were yet sinners. You had grace and mercy to run us down. I'm so glad they caught up with me, Lord. And I pray even now, Lord, that there's some sin out there right now running their lives as they see fit. But God, you said goodness and mercy shall follow. God sent goodness and mercy to track them down and mess their lives up to the point where they start coming back to you because of your goodness and your mercy. Don't let them sleep at night. Don't let them feel comfortable. But God, bring them to the altar. Let them become a recipient of the throne of grace. And God, we're going to continue to pray for our loved ones. Pray that they'll give their lives to you. God, we know we can't make no one change. But God, we can still represent the kingdom. And constantly give them invitation that God is good. Father, we want to thank you for this word. Thank you that we were the first partakers of the throne of grace. God, we just love you. We give you our lives even the more. We trust you because, God, you're so faithful. And we love you, Father. Thank you for choosing us. Thank you for using my record, our life history, to be a part of your plan. And, God, where the devil will try to make shame, we thank you so much that you gave us glory. You've invited us to the high place. Oh, God, we're so grateful and thankful. And God, as it was extended to us, we want to extend it to those that are listening to us today. May you use us for your glory. May we begin to be the watchmen that will look in the dark places to be an example of light that lead people out of darkness. And God, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Somebody clap those hands and give God praise. If you heard this message today and you're not saved and you've not given Christ your life, we want to give you this greatest opportunity as we welcome you to become a recipient of the throne of grace. You can come boldly now. Don't worry about what you've been through. Don't worry about what you've done. Don't worry about what people have to say about you. Amen. Just come as you are. Amen. You don't have to come with money or price. Just come like you are. And guess what? The throne of glory, the throne of God, the throne of his love, it will embrace you. All you have to do is say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me right now. You declared unto me that if I would believe in the Lord Jesus and confess with my mouth, you said I would be saved. And I want to tell you, child of God, it happens instantaneously. You don't have to work for it. It's free. You don't have to dress it up. It's free. Why? Because it's God's grace, which is called his unmerited favor, just for you. Amen. In Jesus' name. As we close out this session, let's give God some praise.
Oh, I can't hear you. Come on. Come on, let me hear a hallelujah in there somewhere. Come on, let me hear a praise in there. 